What Earl brought with him is what he grew up with, and he never forgot the child within. There is something within us that tells us all we will ever know about ourselves. There is a destiny that tells us where we will be born, where we will live, and where we will die. My people were drawn to mountains. They came when the country was young, and they settled in the upland country of Virginia that is still misted with a haze of blue which gives those mountains their name. My family were storytellers. And long before we had luxuries like electric light and radio, we used to sit around the fireplace at night, and each one of us would take turns at telling stories. But above everything else, I wanted to be a writer, gripping a book, reading and rereading the wonderfully colored sentences. This was as close as I could get to another writer. I wrote about each one of you, and I just changed your names and wrote about you as I, as I saw you, and uh, about our family as I had lived it, and I hope I didn't ruin your lives. <laughs> because if the writing's not there, that does, I'm telling you, it's number one. It's usually, it's actually number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. The good writer uses all the techniques there are, mixes and matches them, and tries to make them work, and when they do work, well, they're magical. They always think Walton's and I always think Twilight Zone. <laughs> you unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. The best anthology television show, the original Twilight Zone, uh, of all time. And, you know, the only cast regular in that show is Rod Serling. This is a series for the storyteller because it's our thinking that an audience will always sit still and listen and watch a well-told story. Oh, he wrote some of the best Twilight Zone episodes. Portrait of a Nervous Man, Oliver Pope by name. That one about the car, the, the car that follows the man because he hit the kid. Oh, it's so creepy good. I knew that there was another world beyond the rims of the mountains. <laughs> innocence and the nobility of his characters on the Waltons contrasted so remarkably with the manipulative, evil, and despicable traits that he was able to write and create. He has within him a rod of steel. He is so charming and very sexy He's a very sensual man, but he's strong as that oak tree. When he was writing the script of Charlotte's Web, and a friend called him and said, what's the matter, Earl? You sound so distraught. And Earl's response was, a spider just died. How can you not love this man? It's not often that someone comes along who is a true friend and a good writer. Charlotte was both. Uh, even though it takes a million people to make a television series, it came right from one man, and, and, and it has all the hallmarks of a great literary achievement. Memories came crowding back, and very nostalgic, but also very comforting to know that I had that experience, and we shared it with my brothers and sisters and my brother and father and in an odd way with people all over the world. I hope you'll always remember this house as I do. A light in the window, the lonesome call of a whippoorwill, and voices calling goodnight.